What's up all you crazy kids? Jeff with Torpedoes and Tarantulas here and today I'm going to be doing a collaboration with a friend of mine and fellow YouTuber Jonathan of Tennessee Tarantulas. The topic for today is going to be feeders, more specifically feeder roaches. Now, if you have more than a couple of tarantulas, you know they can get expensive buying feeders from someone else. So a lot of us choose to keep and breed our own. So that's what we're going to be talking about today in this video is how to raise your own breeders and save a little bit of money. Because let's be honest, all of us could benefit from saving a little money, right? Because then we could use the money to buy more tarantulas. So the roaches we're going to be talking about today are the red runner roaches or blatta lateralis roaches. And how this video is going to go down, I think, is... I'm going to show you my setup, tell you about how I keep my roaches, and then I'm going to turn it over to Jonathan. He's going to do the same thing. Then you can draw your own conclusions, start your own roach colony, and then hopefully start uh, feeding your, your collection for a lot cheaper. And by way of doing that, hopefully that will help your collection to grow because now you're saving money on those feeders. So I'm going to quit talking. I'm going to get set up and show you how I keep my roaches. All right, the first thing you take into consideration when keeping your own roaches is what are you going to keep them in? There's quite a few things you can keep them in, but basically these large plastic tubs that you can get from Walmart for a few bucks are the best. Uh, th these things are pretty affordable. They're, they're very versatile, and they're useful for lots of applications for us keepers. You can keep roaches in these. You can keep larger tarantulas in these, other feeders. Uh, just store other things in them. They're just great for all kinds of stuff. Now you can see this one has a latching lid, which is not really super duper important for this particular species of roach because they cannot climb smooth surfaces and they cannot fly. So they're not going to get out on their own. But if it were to get knocked over or something, that just keeps your roaches from spilling out. You can see there is plenty of room down in this tub for the roaches. You can also see I have some small ventilation holes drilled over here on both sides for a good little bit of airflow. This right here, guys, this is like a 7.5 gallon or 28 quart, I think it is. This is an ideal size for a roach colony, unless you've got a much larger roach colony, then you would probably want to upgrade to another another size uh, tub, a, a size bigger tub or whatever. But this has been working fine for me because I'm just starting out with my uh, my colony. So that's, how, that's what you keep them in. I'm going to end it right here, get set up, and then start showing you guys how to care for your roaches. Now, once you've got the right size tub, there are several things that you're going to need to ensure happy, healthy roaches. Uh, the first of those, of course, is some place for them to live or to hide. These uh, these egg cartons, these recycled egg cartons work great. If you, if you get a much bigger colony, those egg flats will also work really well. You can get those pretty cheaply at your local feed store. Uh, of course, some food, which we'll discuss here lately uh, in, a, in a minute. I've got three different types of food. And then if you want to have a breeding colony, substrate is good. If, if you've only got a few tarantulas and you don't really need a breeding colony and you don't want the roach population to get out of hand, you do not have to keep them on substrate. But it's kind of vital or helpful if you do that if you want to have a breeding colony. So to discuss where they hide, like I said, the recycled egg cartons or egg flats work really well. You will notice that they're standing up. The reason for that being is if they're standing up as they're eating and they're pooping, all the poop will kind of go down rather than if they were laying flat. All of this poop would gather in all these little indentations and dimples. And the reason you don't want poop in all those is when you go to get some feeders out. And I use another tub and I just knock roaches down there and grab out what I need. You don't get a ton of poop if they're standing up. So that's what you what you uh, let them live in inside the tub now let's move on to the food alright and so up next is what to feed your roaches it's pretty simple they, they don't they don't need a whole lot of food you can see I've got three different types of food in here I have potato I have carrot and then I have some a, a bowl of roach chow over here which I actually make myself now this roach chow you can buy from people that sell feeders you can buy uh, this stuff from some people that sell tarantulas but I prefer to make my own because again it helps me to save some money um, all three of these food items they like you can also use other vegetables certain ones they like better than others you can use some fruits or fruit scraps 
Also, uh, dog food, especially grain-free dog food, which I feed my dogs. I feed them grain-free food. So I give the roaches grain-free food. It kind of helps boost the uh, the protein that they that they get because they honestly they don't get a lot of protein from a lot of these other things that they eat. So your three basic foods here, as I said, you got your roach chow. Carrots are really good. Potatoes are really good. Apples, oranges, things like that are also really good. You can just kind of experiment and play with it, and then figure out what what the roaches like and what they don't. So there you go. That's what you feed them. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, so basically the last step that you want to consider is the conditions that you keep your roaches in and what you keep them on. As I mentioned, um, I use substrate because I'm trying to establish a breeding colony, and substrate helps because the females will actually kind of deposit their egg cases into the substrate. The substrate holds a little bit of moisture, and I read, saw, and heard that uh, a higher humidity level and even a higher temperature will help uh, the hatching of these egg cases and to produce more babies. So that's kind of how I'm keeping mine now. I've got a little bit of substrate. Every once in a while I will mist the uh, substrate to keep some moisture. I don't have a water dish or any water crystals or anything in here because as you can see there is plenty of moisture on the side of the um, enclosure from me misting it. So they get their moisture from that. But I usually keep my roaches on top of a heating pad that's underneath a couple of towels so that the heating pad is not directly on the tub, but it keeps the tub warm around 85, 90 degrees, uh, about 80% or, 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 or a little less humidity right now. That may change later on. Like I said, I'm just trying to establish a breeding colony. Now, once you've got a good colony going and you don't want your population to get out of control, you can bring that down. So that's basically all I've got on how to keep your roaches. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over now to Jonathan. I hope you enjoy this video. Be looking out for some more videos. We'll see y'all later. Jonathan, over to you. Thank you, Jeff, very much. All right. Well, <clears throat> as you can see on mine, um, I've got a 27-quart uh, Sterilite tub. And in the top of it, I have cut out the middle of it and put a screen in here and uh yeah hot glued it in of course as you can see flip it open and hot glued it in real good where there's no little gaps or anything like that it fits pretty snug the lid <clears throat> and Let's see, I'll lower you guys down here a bit, Let's scoot you guys up, and as you can see, <clears throat> I just now threw some of this in here. <clears throat> of course, me taking off the lids made them scatter a little bit, but uh, they'll come back out. Um, now, the uh, blue stuff that they're munching on down there um, is uh, Fluker's. Uh, it's made by Flukers. Uh, it's a uh, Cricket Quencher original. Um, it's this stuff right here. You guys can get that at uh, Petco, uh, uh, PetSmart, um, Pet Supplies. Um, it's like uh, four or five bucks a jar. Um, and when cool thing about it is these little jars um, make excellent excellent sling enclosures um, I've actually got uh, three of these with slings in them uh, they're bracky pomo wagons so that's a that's one use for the empty container um, of course you add your ventilation holes and all that good stuff but uh, but yeah and uh, as I said in one of my past videos, um, I was going to reveal what uh, what this uh, good old Dubia Chow or Roach Chow is. Instead of having to pay $8 for a 26 ounce tub like this, or I believe it's 26 ounce. I know it's bigger than a, a 16 ounce uh deli cup and not not as big as a 32 ounce deli cup but anyway you can get 50 pounds of this for right under uh 20 dollars so uh show you how to uh 
save some money um, as you can see they're all over it they like it they usually grab them a piece and run off got little ones running around down in there and big ones are invading scaring the little ones off um, all kinds of egg cases and or uthikas whatever you want to call them all over the place in there some of them are good some of them ain't I need to uh, go through and pick the uh, the uh, hatched ones out um, um, oh about I guess about a year ago or so I started out with 25 red runners that I got from fear not tarantulas as feeders so well, actually I got like 30 of them um, I fed like uh, five or six of them off and uh, had uh, 24 or 25 of them left and I just threw them in a tub and uh, fed them and didn't bother them and a year later this is what I got got hundreds of them in here I mean they're they're all over the place oops but uh but yeah this is how I got my setup now I do feed them carrots um, mainly um, is the main vegetable um, that I feed them I will give them apples and um, apple cores and stuff like that um, oranges um, other other fruits leftovers stuff like that of, of fruit and vegetables um, lettuce occasionally but mainly I feed them uh, this right here for the most part um, I feed them this uh, this dubia chow or uh, roach chow if you will and then the uh, the flukers uh, cricket quencher now you don't have to feed them the cricket the cricket quencher it's just a, a way for them to get a water source um, as you know you can't put a regular water dish in there like you would for a tarantula or any other kind of reptile or anything like that because they're kind of stupid and they'll uh, they'll drown themselves but uh, but yeah you can feed them carrots and stuff like that and they can get their uh, their water source from fruit and vegetables um, and they'll do just fine um, before I started feeding them this stuff I fed them uh, fruits and vegetables all the time mainly carrots and that was it um, and as you can see they they've thrived and reproduced and all that good stuff for me um, so yeah now let's get to the secret of the uh, the roach chow all right guys here's your so-called roach chow this is a uh, damar poultry um, if I'm not mistaken I think this is uh, made in Tennessee um, but you can get it other places as well there's also other brands that make the exact same thing this is a uh, chick starter for uh, baby chickens chicks um, make sure you get the uh, the uniform crumble or the crumble um, there's also uh, what they call hen laying mesh or uh, hen laying feed um, it's all you can also get it in a crumble and uh, the crumble basically means it's uh, it's ground up into little bits instead of uh, little pellets um, you obviously don't want the pellets because that would be harder for um, the insects to break down although they they are um, some bigger size pieces in this um, and they they do eat it too and don't have really much problem so I guess really you could do either one but I always find this is better um, especially for smaller insects uh, like your uh, little pinhead lats um, or dubias or um, as you guys may have seen in uh, one of my previous videos um, where I was feeding my mealworms and uh, 
within seconds they were all over it um, this is what it is so uh, yeah and uh, do me a favor and go check out uh, my buddy Jeff's channel I'll put it on the screen it's uh, torpedoes and tarantulas you guys will love his channel he's a really really good friend of mine and I think a lot of him um, go over and give him a sub at least check his channel out and tell him Tennessee sent you he'll be glad to have you um, trying to get him caught up with me on subs I just hit 300 subs uh, a week ago or something like that so I also want to thank all my subscribers um, I never thought I'd reach 300 let alone 100 um, I thought I might get 50 at the most but you guys is uh, really uh, really motivated me and uh, I really really appreciate you guys for supporting me and uh, yeah but yeah, go over and give his uh, his channel a check out and uh, tell him I sent you. So, uh, really appreciate it, Jeff, for doing this collaboration with me. I hope we can do more. And uh, I'll catch you guys later.